hi welcome back to my channel beautiful minutia if you're new here my name is tiffany and today i am doing a weekend reading vlog there's not a lot going on this weekend so i should have a decent amount of time to get some reading done today is friday and this evening claire has a softball game and then i don't think there's anything going on on saturday and then sunday i have church and then also a live show which kind of brings me into what I'm reading this weekend. So the live show is for Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. I have started this book. I think I'm three chapters in and I'm really loving it. It's just very soothing for my soul and is a good reminder of someone who can be a bit legalistic with myself in the way that I follow God that if I feel like I'm not doing this exactly this way or exactly this way, then I'm failing. And so this is definitely a very timely reminder for me. So I'm really, really enjoying this book so far. I am also currently reading The Once and Future King by T.H. White. I set the dust jacket for this down somewhere and I'm not sure where I set it. So I am buddy reading this with Sandy from Miss Reads a lot and our goal was to finish The Sword and the Stone this week and um, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen. I'm right here. I'm about 70 pages in and in order to finish it I need to read this much more which will put me at 213 pages in. So I don't really know if I'll finish this. I'm really enjoying the Sword and the Stone so much. I don't know if the other books have the same kind of feel, but it's very lighthearted, very fun, very funny. I have laughed out loud multiple times while reading this, and it is relatively reminiscent of the Disney movie, The Sword and the Stone. So that is super enjoyable. I'm just loving Wart's interactions with Merlin. I'm loving Archimedes the Owl, King Pelinor, who I don't think was a character in The Sword and the Stone movie. His character in here, and he's very funny as well. Another book that I just started this morning actually is A Bad Business, which is a collection of Dostoevsky short stories. This is a read along that I am co-hosting with Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads, Evie from She Was Only Evie, and Kate from A Literary Apothecary. This is my first interaction with Dostoevsky's short stories. I've read several of his major novels but haven't read any of his short stories. This is a brand new translation of these stories and one of the trans translators is actually Pasternak's nephew. I said in an uh, earlier video that it was like his grandson. It was wrong. It's his nephew. But anyways, I have started A Bad Business, which is the first short story. I'm there. I'm 20 pages in and I'm already seeing a lot of hypocrisy of the main character who is described as the hero of the story and I don't know if he's just going to learn his lesson or if there's just going to be hypocrisy throughout but there's definitely a lot of good humor in here so far. This is the longest short story in this collection so I actually have two weeks to read it in. I think it's about 100 pages long. Yep, 100 pages long, and the whole edition is a little less than 300 pages. So yeah, I have two weeks to finish this one, and then the other ones will be like a short story a week because they're shorter than this one, but so far I'm enjoying it. My bedtime read lately has been a book that I said was going to be low priority for this month, and that's The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I'm uh, kind of like just enjoying this world that the author is exploring and creating and the dynamic between the main characters were kind of it's very flashback flash forward all over the place with that kind of stuff which kind of makes the narrative feel a little bit broken at times and can be a little confusing because they're referencing things that we haven't like really gone over yet so that's kind of interesting i am this far in i don't know how many pages 173 pages so it's odd because this doesn't really feel like a bedtime read it's not very relaxing but it's just been kind of like what I've been in the mood to pick up at bedtime and I think part of the reason for that is most of the other books that I'm reading right now I'm buddy reading so I feel like I have to pay really close attention so I have things to say and comments to make and can interact with other people and I don't feel that way about this so it's like if I miss something or didn't notice something it's kind of like oh well you know like I'm just reading it on my own. And then a book that for some reason I'm procrastinating picking up is The Count of Monte Cristo. 
I don't know why I'm procrastinating this because I actually am looking forward to reading it. I just haven't felt like picking it up. And I think the first live show is a week from tomorrow and I have to be like 200 pages in for that live show. So <laughs> maybe I'll pick this up this weekend. But overall, those are the books that I am currently working on. I am going to the library today because my librarian ordered some books for me. So I don't know if I'm going to get deterred from any of these books by the library books that have come in, but we'll see. I don't really have that many plans for this afternoon. I'm going to try to catch up on some laundry and start some seedlings. I planted a whole bunch of stuff in my gardens this morning before it got hot. So, and weeded them and they look so much better than they did. Something I've been kind of procrastinating because the weather's been really, really hot lately, like close to 90 degrees and today was a much cooler day so I was kind of waiting for today so that way my little seedlings and everything would make it and not die in the heat. That's pretty much it I guess so I will just take you along with me this weekend and see what I end up getting read. <laughs> So I figured I would update you on my reading. It has been a very slow and relaxing morning here. I've just been getting caught up on some things, but I did get some reading done yesterday and a tiny bit this morning. I am making a lot of progress in The Once and Future King, which is great this far. <laughs> About 140 pages in and I just finished chapter 14. Um, so I have this much left of the sword and the stone. So I'm doing pretty well. It's much more readable than I had anticipated and just really, really enjoying the characters. It's just so lighthearted and fun. And some of my favorite things about the Disney movie was when Wart was changed into like a fish and then a squirrel and he has been changed into a fish here. There hasn't been a squirrel yet. Maybe that's coming. I don't know, but he's also been changed into a hawk and an ant and then he's had like another really big adventure and so I have really been enjoying this. There's just a lot of humor and it's been really fun to read. My other main read has been A Bad Business and I read the title story which is also you know a bad business yesterday and that was 100 pages long so I'm this far into it. I didn't have to finish this until next week so I'm actually ahead of schedule on this but once I picked it up I kind of just couldn't put it down. It was very very enjoyable. It had a lot of that classic vivid Dostoevsky imagery. It had some really good characters in it despite the fact that the story was so short. And I just really liked the story in general. I thought it was really good. A lot of good social commentary. So basically the overall plot line of this story is that there are these three gentlemen at a dinner party and one of them who is the hero of the story, that's how he's referred to, basically says that, you know, we need to show more humanity to our workers and we need to be kinder to them and more benevolent to them. But he's very hypocritical in the way that he thinks these things, which is then demonstrated as he ends up at a wedding of one of his subordinates at work. There's a lot of chaos <laughs> that ensues in the story, so there's a lot of nice drama and <laughs> fun things to read here, which is something that um, Dostoevsky does really, really well. And so I really enjoyed that. I also kind of enjoyed the thought process of how we all have these um, causes that we champion or things that we feel so strongly about morally or whatever but then oftentimes we can have some kind of a blind spot where we don't realize that we're actually being kind of hypocritical about those things and I don't think that that is 
uncommon <laughs> for people. So I just, I really liked what Dostoevsky did with this story and just really enjoyed the story in general. It was also kind of fun because one of the characters shares a name with a character in Crime and Punishment. So it almost felt like an Easter egg. And then the main character is Ivan Illich, which reminded me of Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Illich. So that was kind of fun too, that there were kind of these names in there that I had seen in other things. My guess, I haven't researched this yet, and I probably should, is that Dostoevsky wrote a bad business before he wrote Crime and Punishment. Otherwise, I don't think he would have recycled such a well-known character name. So that's my guess is that he used it in the short story first and then reused the name um, for the detective in Crime and Punishment. So the rest of my day should be pretty chill. I'm just kind of getting caught up on some household stuff, some outdoor stuff because the weather outside is just beautiful. That is pretty much it. I have still been working my way through Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. I don't have that book in here. I should <laughs> so I can hold it up. But I am now through chapter four. So I have two more chapters to complete before the live show tomorrow. This evening, Krista from Books and Jams is doing live reading sprints. So I may hop on there and read one of those chapters on but the chapters are really short. So I could easily read two tomorrow morning and it won't be strenuous at all. But I definitely need to go through and just kind of formulate um, my thoughts and things that I might want to see tomorrow. But I'm still just really, really enjoying that book so much. Good morning. It is Sunday morning and I figured I would do a quick little reading update before I need to head over to church. So as you might have seen from the clip, I read the first volume of Fruits Basket yesterday and this is my very first manga. I have wanted to read Spy Family for a while and I'm waiting for it to come in. My library actually ordered it for me but it's not there yet. So I decided I was going to read Fruits Basket and this is actually I think one of Christy Lewis's favorite mangas because she's talked about it before. So I read volume one of this. This basically follows this girl who uh, is an orphan and she ends up moving in with this family where each family member represents an animal from the Chinese zodiac and whenever they are hugged or embraced by the opposite sex they turn into that animal and it's like a curse on their family or whatever. So it's a very strange but interesting premise. The main character Toru Honda this is her she is the cutest ever and I love her so much. She always sees the best in people and as a result of that she brings out the best in people because she speaks kindly to them and basically calls out the good things that she sees and as a result of that those people kind of start behaving that way even more, start being more kind, start being like, wow, I never really realized this. And so her believing in people and being kind to people actually brings out the best in them. And that was probably my favorite part of this whole story. There was a lot of humor in it. Some of it I feel like might have uh, gone over my head just a little bit because I'm not very familiar with Japanese culture, but I still just, I enjoyed it. I actually have volume two, so may or may not dig into that soon but I really really enjoyed this as a first manga. It was kind of hard for me at first because you read everything backwards. You're reading from like right to left and that really threw me off and it took me a while to kind of like adjust to that and make sure I was reading in the right order because I kept confusing myself because my brain is not used to reading from right to left and reading the right page first and then the left page and yeah so it really really threw me for a loop at first but once I adjusted I really enjoyed it. The only other book that I have been reading is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch and last night I think I read like 80 pages or something so I'm now more than halfway through the book and I think I'm kind of hooked now. 
it took me a little while to get into this story because it is a fantasy world and things are mentioned passingly and there aren't that many info dumps to be like hey here's what this means there's a whole like religious system and there's really not very much explanation for that you just kind of get like little tidbits as you go so I felt like it took me a while to get acclimated to the fantastical world that this is set in. It's also very different <laughs> from books that I normally read both in terms of subject matter because it is very like heist based and all that kind of stuff but also content wise this book actually has like a lot more language and violence than I would normally read but there was something about it that just kept drawing me to it and at this point I'm glad that I stuck with it. We'll see if I feel that way once I reach the end of the book but I am really enjoying the friendships that have developed between Locke who is one of the main characters and then the others. I'm really enjoying the whole found family aspect of all these orphans that were taken in and then trained to be these brilliant con artists. So I am really enjoying like the cleverness of Locke and now there's another plot point that's been introduced which is actually on the inside flap so it's not very spoilery to tell you but there's this other person who is now uh, basically conning Locke and manipulating him and he's not used to being in that position because he's the one who's clever and can get himself out of anything and so this is like a whole different world for him and not something that he's used to. So that plot line is really interesting as well. Another reason why it took me a while to get into this book is because we go between flashbacks and present day so Locke as an adult with his friends doing these heists and then like Locke as a child being trained and I liked Locke as a kid more than Locke as an adult and I found that plotline more interesting because it was more informative into the world and into how Locke got where he was but now I'm at the point where I'm pretty invested in both storylines. And then I am all caught up in Gentle and Lowly through chapter six which is the chapter that we need to be on for the live show today. The chapters are really short which is really helpful if you get behind. I had two more chapters to finish and I finished them this morning and kind of was looking over some of the chapters and highlighting and tabbing things that I want to mention or quotes that really meant a lot to me. So I'm really enjoying this book. This book is just, um, like I mentioned, a very timely reminder for me and I'm really enjoying how much the author very heavily relies on the scripture and also he talks a lot about Puritan writings which is also very interesting. I don't think I've ever read any more modern books that deal with that so much but it is funny because he talks so much about Puritan writings and just his writing style I really like a lot but he'll throw in modern references here and there that I'm like that doesn't seem to fit and it's only because of all the Puritan stuff like he talks about like all these things that Jesus can understand and Jesus understands our suffering and he was rejected and and then he's and he talks about all those things and then he's like if Jesus had a Twitter account or a Facebook account everyone would have unfriended him and I'm like <laughs> it was just like such a like it felt like jarring compared to like these Puritan quotes so it's it's just funny. But overall, I'm really enjoying this book so far. Like I said, I'm only six chapters in. I don't know in terms of how that far, <laughs> 67 pages in. So, um, but so far I'm really, really loving it. So today, like I mentioned, I have church and then also have the live show with Krista. So I'm hoping to get some more read today. I really wanna read more of Lock Lamora, but I really need to finish the sword and the stone and I think I have like maybe less than 100 pages left of that book I think so that's probably what I need to prioritize today but we'll see what I end up reading. <laughs> Hello, in true Tiffany vlogging fashion, I am doing my final wrap up on Monday morning instead of a Sunday night. It might be a little loud in the background because in the field right next to our house, they are currently baling hay. So if you hear machinery in the background, 
that's what's going on. Anyways, I did want to hop on here to say that I finished the Sword in the Stone last night. So I'm now about a third of the way through the book because all of the other stories in this collection are shorter than the Sword in the Stone, although I think book three is like close to 200 pages, but the other ones I think are around like 100 pages or something like that. So anyways, final thoughts on the Sword in the Stone. I enjoyed so much of this book. I think my favorite parts of the book were definitely Ward's interactions with Merlin and also when he was turned into various different animals because there's even more animals that he was turned into besides what I mentioned in my last update of this book. So I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly how many but there's at least six different animals that he was turned into which was definitely more than the Disney movie, although he was never turned into a squirrel and there is no Madame Mim. And I'm just a little bit sad that there is no Madame Mim because I loved her in the Disney movie. Uh, but still, it was really just an excellent book. It was just so sweet. And I've said so many times that it's just very lighthearted and feel good and very funny. And that was true throughout the entire story. We didn't really get to the sword and the stone at all until like the last couple of chapters so it almost felt a bit abrupt in how it was introduced but I guess it was kind of that way in the Disney movie too. I think there was something maybe about the sword and the stone in the very beginning of the movie and then it's just like Wart and Merlin for a while and then they end up going to London for a jousting tournament and finding out about the sword and the stone. That's pretty much exactly what happens here in this book too. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this volume with the other three books in it to see if they hold up against how wonderful The Sword in the Stone was, if they are tonally different and plot-wise if they're different. I'm really hoping that Merlin is still in the other stories because Merlin was by far the best character in this book, I think. He was just so funny and witty and clever, although Archimedes the Owl was really up there for me too. I think that those were two of my favorite characters. And I really loved because Merlin kept saying that he ages backwards, so he would mention that like, oh, a friend of mine has said, or maybe he's going to say this and he'd go ahead and quote someone who hasn't even been born yet and won't be for like hundreds of years. So yeah, just lots of wonderful humor. Definitely recommend this book. I think a lot of kids would really like it too. It feels a very whimsical and childish and as I was reading it I kept thinking about how much my daughter would really love it. I never did end up picking up The Count of Monte Cristo so I did really well on my other buddy reads, my Dostoevsky short stories and then also The Once and Future King but have not picked up The Count of Monte Cristo yet so that's definitely something that I'll be working on this week and maybe also finishing up The Lies of Locke Lamora. I am 300 pages in of this 500 page book so I'm now past the halfway point and it's getting really exciting and it makes me want to read more of it so maybe it will get finished this week. I don't know. It depends how highly I prioritize The Count of Monte Cristo. Anyways, I think that that's it for this reading vlog. So I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below if you've read any of the books that I was reading. I'd also love manga recommendations if you have any. Maybe something kind of more along the lines of Fruits Basket where it's more lighthearted and fun as opposed to dark and gritty because that's kind of not necessarily what I'm looking for in a manga. I don't think particularly ones that are super violent or sexually explicit and I never know what to expect from mangas and I think that that's part of the reason why I really haven't picked very many of them up so if you have any recommendations I would definitely appreciate them. And I'd also love to hear what you've been reading lately. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me. And I will see you again next time.